Okay, praise God. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for today. I thank you for all the beauty that you're doing in our lives. Lord, we just hold a net up before you, Lord, that you continue to touch her, heal her, bring her back. Lord, that's a very, very good thing. And Lord, we just thank you to today. You're wanting us to understand, and you want us to know, and you are highly involved in this process. But Lord, you're the only one that can give this revelation. And yet it's up to me to teach the word about this revelation. So Lord, you're the one that's going to have to make it work. And so we trust in you. And we thank you so much for what you're doing. And Lord, may your anointing flow. May I make this understandable today. May it just flow together. We just thank you for all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Okay, who ran off with my blesser? There it is. All right. I, I, had, to, I had to write eSword this week because my eSword on my main study computer wasn't doing what it was supposed to do, and so I, I went to uninstall it and reinstall it, and there's no uninstall button, and there's no, and I'm going, there's got to be, so I thought, I think I'll do this first, and I wrote the guy, I wrote the help, and put in a thing about what I was doing, and he wrote me back that very day. And I, he went, oh, you need to just download this, and that'll do it. And then download that, and it did it. And so it was all really kind of cool. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I had to write to him and say, well, when I put my cursor on something, and I went, I just have to use the word cursor, because he won't, ex won't understand me if I put my blesser over something. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, just letting you know, I had to use that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we are funny people. No, you are the funny yes. people. <laughs> Me, myself, and I, we are funny people, mm. all three of us. <laughs> okay. Communication from the throne. And we've been talking about epignosis. This is the whole series that we've been talking about. Gnosis, knowledge, not knowing things in the natural realm, the mind, intellect, data banks, attainable knowledge. It's knowledge that you can go out and attain by yourself. Amen. 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 And then we epi on it, and that just throws everything into a real tizzy. Superimposed over from the natural up. This is knowledge that you cannot know. You can't go out and just attain this. This is something that has to be given. Uh, it needs to be revealed to you. What does that do to you? Oh, it matures you. I know what I'm bringing. Okay. Well, what does it do for you? It brings your anointing. Okay, it just does all sorts of neat stuff. So, uh, we've been learning and growing. This is now the 14th message on this subject. So, I think now you've seen that, that screen 14 times. And so, I, I think you should be able to know what I'm talking about by now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kate, you look like, yeah, I'm so bored with that screen. Get a new one. Okay, I get it. I get it. Okay, everything in Scripture <laughs> is about growing. Okay, as we learned this last week, we've been really hitting this. Everything in Scripture is about growing. This is what makes us so, so cool. Nothing is static. If you aren't pursuing growth, you're going backwards. Just the way it is, okay? Like walking in a strong stream. Walking upstream, yeah. Walking downstream is even kind of tricky, okay? You still get wet. Remember, going downstream, it gets more water, so you're going to get deeper. I just want to let you know that. Okay, going up, yeah, just whatever. Okay. Our relationship is a living thing, not a dead religion. And well, we were discussing these two weird things that I encountered this week, the two different kind of weird things. Mm -hmm. Why would anybody have that kind of a, a heresy? Would Because he doesn't have a relationship with Jesus. That's right. It's the way it works. So we must grow, each of us, must, must, must grow. Observable change, observable change. That means you're different today than you were yesterday, Heidi. Observable change. Which ties into the other thing we were discussing, which is the fruits of that relationship. Yes, absolutely, okay. How much have we grown in the last year? Okay, that should be something that is, uh, Measurable. It's something we should be able to know that I have, I'm better 
in some ways this year than I was last year. I, I think, think it should be measurable between last month and this month, okay? I believe we should be growing. Um, big deal. I had a, a session with a guy from HPN this last week. How fun to re rehash stuff and reacquaint with what we're doing. And, and it was just really fun. And I'm sitting here and I realize since the last time I'd met him, what all I had learned and what all things we have been applying in here that I've not been able to tell him about. And I went, it was kind of overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, ooh, ooh. And it was just a, a wonderful thing for me to feel that, man, we have grown. We have grown in these things. It's been, it was pretty exciting. I dropped me into some real worship right there. And uh, that was pretty good. So Colossians chapter 2, 18 to 19 says this. Let one, no one condemn you, delighting in humility and worship of the angels, pushing into things which he has not seen, being puffed up by the mind of his flesh without cause, which is the whole thing that we are talking about. Okay, just, okay forget it. Be nice, down boy. <laughs> Not holding fast the head. See, that just, it doesn't make all the sense in the world. After, okay. And the rest of you are going, huh? Don't worry about it. Okay. From whom all the body, having been supplied through the joints and bands and being joined together, the word there, supplied, is the Greek word epikorageo. Just like we had the two times it was used in 2 Peter chapter 1, is that you add, you supply to your in your faith virtue in your virtue knowledge and at the end it says Jesus will supply an entrance he will dance you into the kingdom and it's just too big oh. through the so so the visual would be that Jesus actually leads the dance and that provides the entrance into the things and then you supply the effort to walk through with him which supplies, you supply right. to, you, to each of these. You do the dance steps or you're not dancing. Just dragging around a dead body. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Done that. All right. And then it says, being joined together, which we'll talk about in just a second again, will grow with the growth of God. I think that is fascinating because, again, whose growth is it? God's. It belongs to God. I think it is to God. <laughs> I tickle this stuff. It tickles me, and I don't even know if I, if anybody's getting it, but I'm laughing at myself all the time. By the way, Kurt said this morning. Yeah. Said everything belongs to God. Yeah. So. It's all his. Amen. You're just, whatever, you're giving it back to him. That's right. Grow together with him and each other. He, Kurt was talking about, says, God gives us everything. And then we turn around and say, we're giving you the tithe. And he says, no, I own everything. You're given the, given the privilege to give some of it back to me. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Anyway, yeah, that's kind of right. Ephesians chapter 4. Oh, Ephesians 4. Who would have thought about going into Somebody Ephesians? Wants in. Somebody wants in. Billy. Oh. Good morning, sir. Nice to have you. We're doing um, review first, and then we'll get into the m next part of the message. So you're, you're going to get caught up. We're now in Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. It says, And indeed he gave some to be apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, with a view to the perfecting of the saints into the work of the ministry, into the building up of the body of Christ, until we all may come into the unity of the faith and of the full revelation knowledge, the epigenosis of the Son of God, into a full-grown man, into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is all about growth, into a full-grown man. He's grown up, we're trying to grow up to match him. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. This is all about maturing, growing into it. And so we have to get the epigenosis, the revelation knowledge. How cool is that? Okay, so what that verse is talking about is making your calling and election stable, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it just reiterates back there in Second Peter chapter one. But if you will make your calling and election sure, you will never, ever fall. I think that's just so. That's what this is about. I'm just correlating these together because this is a whole concept that 
continues around. This is what we are called to do, okay, to grow up in Christ. It's an active process. It has to be active. Just like the dance, it has to be continually moving. Grow into this and into that and into that and into that and into that. Keep moving. Every relationship needs to keep moving. Um, when If you have a relationship and it becomes stagnant and neither one is moving, neither one of them will find the value in that relationship. One more time. If you have a relationship with somebody <laughs> and you both have quit growing, neither one of you will find the value in that relationship and it will fall apart. God's plan for us is to be like Christ. Amen. We're not going to make it. Just letting you know. That requires His revelation knowledge, though. His. We can't do this without Him. We just can't. Well, then back to Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, 1 through 3, it says, For I want you to know how great a struggle I have concerning you and those in Laodicea, and as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be comforted, being joined together in love. Okay? Joined together. That word joined together, we're going to be hitting in a second. Okay? Joined together in love, and into all the riches of the full assurance of the understanding, into the epigenosis of the mystery of God, even of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tried to break that down a little bit last week. Um, I'm not going to do that all again this week. Okay? That, this thing is so full of amazing things. But hearts, being, hearts comforted being joined together in love. I have found that everything I'm going through, if I know that Jesus is right there with me in it, I'm comforted. I said that in the right syllables, comforted. Okay, I don't know. Sounded wrong. That word joined together is the word symbibadzo. Symbibadzo. Together to be forced together. And it's like forged welding. Forged welding is fascinating to me. You get two pieces of metal hot in a forge and you beat them with a hammer and they become one piece of metal. That's kind of like, yeah, come on. I like that. That's just... <sighs> Until we get the riches of the full assurance of the understanding. Total confidence of putting it all together. I love it. He doesn't want us to be walking around completely bumfuzzled, okay? We're supposed to be actually getting some understanding. Okay? But it's his understanding. He is walking us through it. The more we trust him, the more understanding we get. The better it gets. I love it. And then it says, into, we're growing into the epigenosis of the mystery. What's the mystery? The mystery of the ages? Here it is. Mystery of the ages is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Which I really wanted to bring up to Kurt as he was talking about that, because this is like, okay, this is going to help you out there, buddy. So it's the Trinity working in you to bring you to maturity. All three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit working in us to bring us into maturity. I think it's fascinating. Treasures of wisdom and knowledge are all hidden in Christ. You want to know some? I know where it is. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Epigenosis is not a one-time thing. It just isn't. Praise Jesus. Can you say praise Jesus? That's a praise Jesus. praise Jesus. That's a good thing. It's not a one-time thing. We must grow in it continually. And we must apply it personally and grow personally. Okay? We have to. It's it's all relationship. It's all there. Then it affects the others around us, which is what we were talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, huh? See? Yeah, what a timely message. What a time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> For review. <laughs> like I said, most people get the main message in the review. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the start of the dance is in us. That's where it's got to start. It's got to start because we are willing to do the changes. Then it touches others with its effectiveness. That is too fun. If we're all dancing, then we're all growing. Now, I hate to tell this to you, but we're not all dancing. Okay, we might, the people in this room might be, people who are hearing my voice might be, but we know too many people that just aren't dancing. 
Are they growing? No. What's the outcome? They will not gain the maturity and they'll have problems. That's all there is to it. Okay? We are becoming more like him every single day and that's the beauty. I do want to. Well, that's the only scriptures we're going to do on review. Okay? The goal is a long way away. Christ likeness. It's a long ways away, but we have come a long ways. That's just that's amazing to me to look back and go, wow. You know? I was trying to explain to some, I have some new people trying to explain to them again what my life was like back in the day when I was addicted. And it's just like, I know the facts, but I don't recognize him. I don't know him. I mean, I lived him. It was all good, but man, have we come a long way. Jesus is dancing us toward the goal. Absolutely amazing. Therefore, the process is thrilling. Knowing that Jesus is doing it with us. Pretty cool. Not bad. A little bit of review. If we're all growing, if that's everything is growth in the Christian walk, that's because it's a living thing. Um, trees grow, they live. You cut a branch off and make a cane out of it, makes it a stick, cool. It's no longer alive. It's a stick. It's a little more complicated than that. Yeah, I'm bringing it to the simplicity of the whole thing, but yes, that's still true. <laughs> I can't all of a sudden grow two canes out of it. No, but it does perfectly represent the concept of stagnation. Because it can't continue growing, it will begin to die. It's not dead yet, because for it to be completely dead, it would be a rotted piece of wood. Just not okay. Me, I I just know too many Christians. They're, they're just they're pretty stumpish. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So can't argue that one. Can't argue that one. Okay. Well, let's go on because this is going to be fun for me. <laughs> Maybe it'll be fun for you too. <laughs> we have seen some amazing things from epigenosis. Oop, I forgot to italicize that one. We have even learned how to gain it. Personally, take the steps, dance it in, dance it out. But it isn't a one-time thing. We must continually be dancing. We must be continually dancing with Jesus. It's got to be a continual thing. You know, and again, the discussion is having the presence of Jesus. Okay, we go to church to get into the presence of Jesus. If that's true, you've got way too much religion. Because the presence of Jesus is with you, always, constantly there. How, how do you know it? How do you not? You know? I mean, that's just, that's the relationship. It's always constantly there. We must grow in this thing, oh, for the rest of our lives. Talk about job security. This is what, you know, this is our thing. Man, we've got to do this thing for now on. Heidi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought make sure I was making sure you're paying attention here. Okay, it's all good. Okay. The idea of this walk with Jesus is spectacular. He loves us so much. He wants to be with us. He wants us to grow. He wants to grow with us. He wants to go on. This is too cool. Too too cool. But there are even more uses for epigenosis. Oh really? <laughs> Yes, there are. So let's dig for some more. You ready to jump in? Everybody ready? Chuck, you ready? He says he's ready. Okay, here we go. <laughs> go to Matthew chapter 7, 15 through 20. It says, But beware of the false prophets who come into you in sheep's clothing, but inside they are plundering wolves. From their fruit you shall know them. Oh, epigenosco. 
Ah, do they gather grapes from thorns and figs from thistles? So every good tree produces good fruits, but the corrupt tree produces evil fruit. A good tree cannot produce evil fruits, nor a corrupt tree produce good fruits. Can't do it. Every tree not producing good fruit is cut down and thrown to the fire. Then surely from your fruits you shall know them. Okay. From their fruit you shall know them. Fruits, by the way, it does say is plural. This is kind of very, very interesting. I want you to see this, okay? Because we, we sit there, you say, we can't judge people, but we can discern fruit. Yes. See, that's what we were just saying. See, I knew this was coming, so I didn't say anything before. So I knew this was okay. I enjoyed that. That was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you all weren't on the conversation before. It was, uh, I thought that was too funny. Okay. <laughs> Y'all still love me, right? Okay. Then, yeah. <laughs> sure. From their fruits, you shall know them. You shall epi know them. Why? God is into helping you discern. You can't get epigenosis from anything but God, right? Right. So, here we are working on things. God is wanting you to discern what is happening with their fruits, which is bringing us to that other conversation we had. Wow, you guys came at the right time, man. We just had a really, y'all should have been in that conversation. You know, that was revelation. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the more you're in relationship with Jesus, the more you'll epic genosis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. The more he is able to trust you with the discernment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It isn't just looking at ourselves. Now, remember, the first of the the dance steps were all about introspection. It's all about working on the inside of us and working on the things. And then finally it goes into brotherly kindness. It steps out. And then it goes into love. It steps out a long ways. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it isn't just looking at ourselves. We can epi know other people. <laughs> I, how else are you going to put that? I think that's a very good sentence and I will back by it. I stand by that sentence. We can epi know others. <laughs> you guys, discernment is a huge, huge gift. Okay, it really is. And it can be a burden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, knowing the route by which other people operate, you can see it. Man, if that wasn't, if it wasn't for discernment, face to face would be completely defunct. It would not work. Yeah. The discernment of what happens in somebody's life as we sit there and just, and they always start opening up and you just start showing and finding things and man, that gets fun. Okay. We need this now more than ever before. Why? It's getting darker out there. <laughs> you don't believe it? <laughs> then you haven't listened to the news at all. You haven't listened to anything that's going on. The world is getting darker out there right now. Okay, We can be taken in by a fancy word or a ministry. And that has been done to me. I have been sucked in. Mm -hmm. I've been sucked in. But sometimes we actually need to look closer. The fact is, almost every time, we need to look closer. Um, see, I, I wasn't given the opportunity to look closer in some of these ministries. Um, none of us knew how to look closer at the Rabbi Zacharias thing. We didn't know him. We didn't know what was going on. I mean, we just saw the outside. But if we'd had a relationship with him where we were talking with him personally, on a, we, I think we could have discerned it. Okay? Because those that really knew, really knew. Have you ever been in a, like a seminar or something like that and been able to discern from that? Like, do you think if you had been in a crowd where he was speaking, you could have picked it up and then like, possibly oh, something's not. It's right. possible. Absolutely. Because you get it from the Lord, right? Yeah. The Lord just shows it. And I know what you're thinking. I know exactly where we were sitting when you were, we were having lots of revelation right there. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing at you. It's all good. Okay. Um, we will also be epi known by our fruits. For sure. Okay. So... That's a, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. People can know us too. And if you think you're getting away with anything, just letting you know. 
God, the Holy Spirit is the biggest blabbermouth in the universe. He is willing to tell everybody all your junk. He is really <laughs> wanting to know that. And <laughs> so, eh, that's true. Matthew chapter 11, 25 through 27. And wasn't that fun to know about the, knowing their fruits is epigenosis? That's, that's really fun. How about this one? Answering that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you hid these things from the sophisticated and the cunning and revealed them to babes. That is not epigenosis. Hang on. Yes, Father, for so it was pleased before you. All things were yielded up to me by my Father, and no one epigenosco the Son, except the Father, nor does anyone epigenosco the Father, except the Son, and the, and the one to whom the Son purposes to reveal Him. This is too fun. This is too big for me, because the word revealed there is the other word for revelation. Okay, which is, anybody? <laughs> no? No, apocalypse. Apocalypsis. Apocalypsis. Very good. Ho oh, ho. Nate gets another star for the day. I almost want to say apocalypto, and it's like. It is. It's That's the Greek. Okay. <laughs> it's both to reveal and the revelation verb noun. Okay, so it's all good. Apocalypsis to reveal, and that word comes from two words: apo, off, and kalupto, the cover. And it literally means taking the cover off something. Okay, now that you know that, I'm going to go back. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, it says, it says, you hid these from the sophisticated and cunning and took the cover off for the babes. Okay, yes, Father, it's pleasing to you that all things were yielded up in my Father, and no one epigenoses the, the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone epigenosco the Father except the Son, and the ones to whom the Son purposes to take the cover off. Mm. Wow. See, now, this means Jesus is really involved in taking things off, and he's peeling them back bit and piece at a time as much as you can handle. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And you've seen in your own life as you've grown, he can peel back things better, better for you. Mm -hmm. Than when it was a while back, when a little bitty little glimpse and glimmer about blew your brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. That's the one. And so we we know this. Okay, this is is cool. You know, it's funny. I actually got this verse a couple months ago, and I was like, "Oh, should I teach on this?" And he said, no, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so there. And then I forgot about it. I'm like, oh, yeah. And so what did he do today? He took the cover off. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. Praise Jesus. But no one epigenoscos the son or the father unless it's revealed to them. Mm -hmm. And I know I Englishized the Greek word for you there, but that's okay. <laughs> I can do that. We'll allow it. I'm sure. Humble. Not proud, get to know these things. It says, I give grace to the humble, I oppose the proud. Okay? He's going to show things to the babes. The more you understand how babyish you are, the more you think you're really tough, the less you get the revelation. Love those babies. Yes. <laughs> and that's us. It's there by relationship and purpose. God wants us to know these things on purpose, by relationship. What a privilege to have Jesus show us things. Is that cool? That's so cool. Isn't that cool? Okay. Because Jesus is working us. Now, you've heard of the apocalypse. The four horsemen of the apocalypse. Okay, everybody talked about that one. The apocalypse. The four horsemen of the revealing. Yeah, well, that's because the word, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which is the last book of our Bible, right, is uses the word apocalypsis as the revelation. Okay, that's why they call it the apocalypse. Yeah. So the four horsemen of revelation is the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And so what, what was the whole book about is God taking the cover off of the future a little bit. 
Just a little bit, just enough to completely drive us crazy and scare the brains out of us, yeah. okay? <laughs> just enough. He's, and you just see that, he's just like, here, look at this. We'll then cover it again. We run around, old tight circles. So, and so people are always asking about, so is this what's going to happen in the future? I don't know. Um, I don't really want him to take the, top, the cover off of that one completely right now. I just know me. Okay. It's so horrible, but I can't stop looking. <laughs> you just, you'd, think, you'd think we'd figure it out. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is what? 1 Corinthians 13, there you go, the love chapter. There it is, love chapter for all you hippies out there. Love chapter. <laughs> I went down yesterday, Roxy and the family went down to this tea room down on South Broadway and had a tea for Roxy's birthday, okay? So as, as the girls, is is. Roxy and Kimberly and and, uh, Tiffany, and Tiffany and Abby. Okay, and they went down. To, well, there is no parking. It's down on South Broadway, and it's has to park on the street, and it's just like. And so I was walking down. I walked in there to see if they had a place in the back for parking, or if. And so I, I walked from where we were over. We parked on Lincoln and kind of walked around to see if there's any because we were early. And I walked by this place, and it's a hippie shop, and that's what it even says on the title is. Mm -hmm. Hippie place. Mm -hmm. Not a happy place, it's a hippie place. I went, oh no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> gives me the heebie jeebies right there. You want to look in he man? You know? <laughs> <laughs> it says in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, For now we see through a mirror in dimness, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will epigonosco even as I was epigonoscoed. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I had to Englishize that to make it make sense. But that first word, for I know in part, is gnosko. It's regular attained knowledge. I know in part, it's true. but there will be a time when I will epigonosco. Mm -hmm. I will know him by full revelation. Now, I will not know everything. Okay? Come on, I'm not going to be God. But I'm growing in Him for eternity. How big is He? Wow. And I will know how He knows me. I will epigonosco even as I was epigonoscoed. Yeah, see, that's, that's burning some brain cells. So, so you, you get to heaven, right? And you will know even as you are known. Not completely. Right, but because now there is absolutely nothing between your soul and the Savior. Absolutely. Good song. Yeah, I chose that one specifically, <laughs> right? Even if you don't know everything, you can ask the questions as the thought arises and the answer comes instantaneously because there's nothing between you two. Now, I need to rephrase that. There's no, nothing standing between you yeah. two. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, how many times have we done this in, in uh, identity, right? We have them stand before Christ and they step into Christ, right? And we say, now, how fast is your communication with him when you're inside him? And they always go, it's instant. And I keep telling them, it's faster than instant. It's precognitive. In other words, he knows you're asking before you ask it. And so they go, and I always have them ask, Jesus, do you love me? And they always, I say, just ask him, Lord, do you love me? And they, every time, will say, Lord, do you love me? And they say, he was answering before I could say it. Mm -hmm. Before I finished. Happens all the time. Right? Because now I know in part, but then, okay, man, if there's nothing between us that is blocking us, okay, and I will know even as I was known, what was I known? Jesus knows who I really am now. Amen. Yes, I don't. <laughs> I don't have epigenosco about who I am. I'm gaining it. I'm getting there. I know some more. But I'll tell you, even as we were talking before, what is the, the mystery of the ages? 
Christ in you, the hope of glory. What? <laughs> okay, how about the other one? It says, if I can just get rid of the stupid veil, then I can look at myself in the mirror and see the glory of the Lord in the mirror. Who am I? We're the glory of the Lord. Every time I say that, people go, uh-huh. Uh-uh. One more time. We're the glory of the Lord. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, one more time. We're the glory of the Lord is who you are. And you go, uh -huh. no, okay. So it's kind of like, it's my gymnastics thing. <laughs> it's good for my neck. Okay. Gets rid of my chiropractors, right? Exercise. No. Yes, okay, an exercise. Here we go. We gain revelation bit at a time. True. Because... Well, we can't handle it all at once. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine if you knew all you know now, if God had just dumped that into your brain about five years ago? It would be like that episode <laughs> of Doctor Who where Donna becomes a doctor. <laughs> yeah, just, it just blow your head. I, I can't. It's amazing. It's a journey. Step at a time. Step at a time. One bit piece of time. Progress has to be recognized, though. Mm -hmm. progress has got to be recognized have you progressed if not what's the hindrance see that's that's my question in every face to face situation is a person is sitting there what's the hindrance because Jesus wants them to know Jesus wants them to grow Jesus wants them to have him more and more and more. Jesus wants a greater revelation and a greater relationship. This isn't about what Jesus wants. It's about what they want. Well, that right there is the problem. Well, that's, say, say that. Oh, okay. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's about what the people want. If they don't want, want it, yeah, okay. then it just... But that's not the way it sounded at first. Yeah, that's okay. I'm confused. I, but I still love you. Okay. Thanks. There's our hills, valleys, and bumps in the road mm -hmm. in every one of our journeys. Okay? And we recognize those hills and valleys and bumps in the road. Mm -hmm. But we have gained in Revelation. And again, mm -hmm. just to quote the last book of the Chronicles of Narnia, further up and further in. Okay. The epigenosis is the gain of our journey. That's the gain. We are gaining in this journey. How cool is that? What do you know of the Father and Jesus now? Isn't it amazing how much more you know of him? Mm -hmm. And then we get all these things that tell us that they try to limit the power and scope of Jesus Christ. And just like, uh, the more I know, the more I know I know, the more I know I don't know. Mm -hmm. The more I know I need to know. Okay, I thought he was leaving, but he's not. Okay, what is established in your life right now? What has he already grown and established in you? That's a good thing to know. That's a big thing to know. So, how well does Jesus know you? <laughs> Very well. <laughs> totally. We aren't finished until the levels match. <laughs> Tell how much I know him is equal so we're not done yet I thought, I thought that was a good way of putting it I, I like that Okay, more discovery of the other person is the joy isn't that the joy of the relationship is discovering more about the person that you're in a relationship with yes okay Amen. yes my wife had her birthday yesterday I love her it's amazing we are growing more and more. We still n are learning more and more about each other. <laughs> Mine is a joy. Hers is a, oh, Lord, have mercy. But it's okay. We're growing. <laughs> so you could say yours is a joy and hers is a journey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about right. To which I, I tell her, you're welcome <laughs> for the growth. Okay, that's what makes the relationships grow is getting to know each other. It's the same in relationships here. Same in the relationship with Jesus. We have to grow. We have to grow in it. It's the way it works. Husband and wife, Jesus in the church. Hmm. <laughs> Growth of revelation. Okay. 
How, how cool. Okay, why do we have the natural of marriage? So we can understand the supernatural of the relationship of Jesus. Covenant. Ah, oh, this is amazing. So, but now we're looking through a dim mirror. But then, face to face. The goal is to get more now through the mirror. That's the goal, is to get more now through the mirror. What we gain now is usable now. <coughs> now, that's important to know. What I gain now is totally functional and applicable and usable now. Okay, so I find areas in my life where I don't have it, that's where I have deficit and that's where I have to grow. Okay, so we, we can't wait until the end. I know everybody's so waiting for Jesus waiting to come. For yeah, we're just not doing anything and just when Jesus is going to come and he's going to snag us up and we're going to be, yeah, that's all good. Sorry. I, I'm not waiting. I want to grow in Jesus more now. Okay? That's what I want to do. We must learn and apply it now for benefit to everyone. Because as I grow and I get benefited, I benefit other people. Right? And what you get in Revelation, you have to share with me. You have to grow me. So anybody who's complaining about where I stand right now, it's because you haven't done your job of growing me more. So there. <laughs> Just throw that one out there. <laughs> so irritate each other is the righteousness and God. All right. So back to the welding thing. Uh -huh. You know, like it, it uses the word knit in there, and so every time that I see that word, it reminds me of the process of felting. So, like when you're hammer forging, forge welding, the metal is submitting. It's softening and joining together. In felting, the barbs of the fibers are uh, hooking. hooking together and then being connected solidly. If you know the, the hills and bumps and what, if there's imperfections in the metal, if there's dirt in the wool, it won't join properly. So True enough. the purification process of us all is necessary so that we can unite properly to help one another. Which is conviction. That's exactly what conviction is. is conviction is the Lord helping us get cleaner so we can be functional. Amen. See? It just, yeah. And we always look at conviction as being bad. No, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Of course, but that's looking at the piece of metal that's looking at the the sand paper wheel that's is coming up against going, oh, no, no, what are you doing? What are you doing? We're taking all the junk off. Oh, that's got to feel good, right? Watch, rinse, repeat. Yeah. And repeat, and repeat, and repeat, and repeat. Yes. Okay. Loving others as is epigenosis of his love now. See, I have to love others the way Jesus loves me. So I have to get a revelation knowledge of his love now for me to love others as. Everybody understand that sentence? Yeah. Oh, good. What we do, what we do know is in part now. Okay, we will get more. That part has to be grown and applied. Everything we are learning has got to be applied. It's not knowledge about, but it's their knowledge. The knowledge of the Father and the Son. <laughs> knowing the truth and knowing the truth. Mm. <laughs> it's a good point. Yep. That's a very good point. Okay, back to Colossians chapter 3, 8 through 10. And it says, but now you also... Put off all these things, wrath, anger, malice, evil speaking, shameful speech out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, having put off the old man with his practices. Everybody know what this passage, I mean, this is the whole thing about identity. This is the passage we use about taking off the old man. Put off these things, things you do to yourself. You have to put this off. It's in the middle voice. You have to take these things off. Do not lie to one another, having put off the old man with his practices. And then it says, and having put on the new. 
It's also done in the middle voice, something you do. Having been renewed, what? In epigenosis, according to the image of the one creating him. This is absolutely amazing to me. God has given us this wonderful tool of identity to help get rid of things in our lives, okay? And to, wow, take off the old covenants and walk into new, and this is, uh, this is absolutely amazing. But when we go to put on Christ, the second part of that, after we take off the old man and put it to death and all that sort of stuff, when we go to put on the new, what are we putting on? And people say, well, I'm thinking, no, just you got to let Jesus show it to you. Why? Because put on the new man, having been renewed in revelation knowledge, according to the image of the one creating him. That is massive. Putting off the lies, the covenants of the past, and then putting on the new man. All of these are commands that we do to ourselves. I can't put on my own image. Meaning what? I have to see his image of me. Now, you have your own self-image. I know that because all we have to do is examine the clothes you wear. That's the image that you try to portray. And if it means a slob, it means... No. <laughs> okay. But most of us have this image of just being relaxed and being casual, being just normal, just... You know, just. I've known a lot of people who, men, it took time every day to decide what clothes they were going to wear, how they were going to look, how they are going to do their, their hair, their makeup, their whatever. It took time and energy every day. It's important. It is. It really is. Because they have an image that they are trying to portray. Now, when I first taught on identity, okay, I uh, told my assistant pastor at the time, Randall, I says, okay, I am leaving um, during worship. I will not be around. Others are doing worship. And I says, um, when the worship is over, I want you to go up front. I want you to pray. And then just sit down. Like you're starting a message. Just pray at the beginning of the message and sit down. And he says, then what? Then your business. Just sit down. He says, okay. So I told the guy in the sound booth, I says, as soon as Randall sits down, play this song and gave him a flash drive, so played this song. It had only one song on it, so he couldn't get it confused. And so Randall, you know, had worship, they had stuff, and they did whatever, and they, he got up and he prayed, and then he sat down, and everybody's looking around like, what's, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, over the loudspeakers, you hear this, out of the night when the full moon is bright comes the horseman known as Zorro. And I come running in the back in a complete Zorro outfit. Cape, mask, hat, sword, whip, the whole nine yards, total black. Come running in around around the side of the race and everybody's going, what in the world? And I jump up on the lower stage and I pull out my whip and I jump up on the higher stage and crack it. Two times I drop it down and I reach over and I pull out my sword as I jump off the top stage and just jump off the lower, lower stage with my sword right in, right at the throat of Randall, my assistant pastor. No wonder he has issues. <laughs> I didn't do this one to you. I did this one to him. So you're lucky on this one. Not just once. just once. So, so, and I should, and he's just sitting there just, he's, he's just like, sitting very still, wise man. And so I'm sitting there and I looked around the room and everybody just, just wow. And I says, who am I? And they said, Zorro. I says, no, you idiots, you know it's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and they're going, yeah, but yeah. But yeah. So I says, no, you know, I says, what? The outer garment is how we promote our identity so many times in some way, shape, or form. That's the hats we wear, the coats we wear, the whatever. But there's something that promotes 
who we are, if it even promotes that we're just relaxed and don't care. What others think, okay? Goes to that. But that was, it's an idea is that the whole outer garb can promote an idea, okay? Mm -hmm. Right. So then I was able to take off the sword and the cape and the mask and the hat and the gloves and, uh, but I still had, that it was you. yeah, it just t took a long time. <laughs> they all knew. Okay, so it was just like, but I, you know, then I preached in my little black outfit the rest of the time. Okay, we talked on identity, but that was the beginning of the understanding. This is the same thing, is I have to see his image, not mine. Mm -hmm. I have to see his image, not mine. He created me specifically for purpose and destiny. Wow, specifically. Created for a certain job. I can't do this without him, and I can't do it without revelation knowledge. I need the epigenosis to get done the job that he has called me to do. That image is who I really am. That image. <laughs> and every time I've done ministry on my identity and saw more about how he sees me, the more it tickles me, the more it just absolutely is just amazing. But each time I understand, as I gain more in the, set, in the image of what he sees, I get more job I have to do. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> that image is who I really am. It is different than the image I have created. It's his. We are very flippant about the magnitude of this. Oh yeah, who's yeah. Jesus? See us? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I think we're way too flippant about that. Yeah. I think there's so much more importance about who Jesus says we are. We don't know who we are. We just don't. We don't know our value, and we don't know our place in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. What do we have to do? Well, we've been created for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. You know? This isn't some think they were born in the wrong time. I think I was born in the wrong continent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just like, it's the whole idea behind <laughs> It's the whole idea behind we have an image of what we think, okay? And it will get us killed, okay? Created for such a time as this. We need this revelation. We need this epignosis of who we are, okay? It is more and better than our lives have told us. I'm trying to explain to a woman this last week about the lies that I believed about myself, the reason I used the porn. Right? Just like trying to explain. Yeah. I had I had fantasies about who I was because I didn't like who I really was. But that's because I didn't know who I really was. You understand? Should make us bold and humble. It really should. He said, Well, which is it? Yes. <laughs> the yes. Are they're not. <laughs> Requires relationship with our creator. So that he is creating us. So we have to have that relationship with our creator. One of the most important things we could possibly do is have the relationship with him and find out how he sees us. Okay. Requires repentance. It requires forgiveness. It requires the cleansing of our unrighteousness. Does that sound familiar? Yes, First John 1, 9. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. That's the repentance and the forgiveness, and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Very, very important. Lining up our soul with our spirit. Ooh, that's, that's the job. That's the job. Getting rid of all the hardness of heart. Oh, dang. That's the idea. And therefore, seeing who we really are, the glory of the Lord in the mirror. See, this is all the stuff that we've, we've been teaching for how long about the revelation. But if we don't get the epigenosis of who we are, we can't put that on. We have to get the revelation of it. So epigenosis is at its most practical today. This is the one, putting it on. Knowing who I am, knowing Jesus, knowing, oh man, to put that on. Ah, that is absolutely amazing. So the vast importance of how we see ourselves. <sighs> and
and, of course, how we see and know Him of vast importance. Isn't it amazing how we don't obey the God of the universe? <laughs> yeah. We have the audacity to tell Him no. Audacity. <laughs> it's just mind-blowing dumbness. I don't know. I just... <clears throat> quest to find out where we get the audacity. <laughs> <laughs> much more heavenly minded. That's the idea. We need to get much more heavenly minded. And therefore, change our perspective. Okay? Was this a fun one? See, this is, mm -hmm. this actually, this, the title on this one is called Benefits. Epigenosis, Benefits. Mm -hmm. This is benefits. Forget not all of his benefits. Absolutely. Okay? So, pretty cool. Questions? Comments? Is this a fun topic? This is really such a fun topic. Oh, yeah, especially considering our conversation before we started. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do have those. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We, more than once. Well, I don't hear anything else coming in, so let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives. Lord, you are so good to us. And Lord, we just know that we need to have our eyes opened up. We need to see. We need to know. We need to understand. And the only place we get that is from you. So Lord, help us to grow in this revelation. For all these things, Lord, we just thank you. We love you so much. Lord, may we grow more today than yesterday. Mm -hmm. Lord, we just thank you and love you for all of it. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Amen, 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 amen. <clears throat> so, well, praise God, gentlemen. You, you two are the only ones left, so everybody else has dropped out while we're teaching, and that's, that's good. <laughs> nice to have you. <laughs> so, uh, yes, sir. Sorry, so, I am. So, God bless you guys, and we will talk at you all later. No.